Hi everyone, my name's Jasmine, and today I thought I would do a quick video on how I take care of all my cacti. Wade and I are going to Paladero soon, and I got this book because I'm very excited to go hiking and see all the different cacti. So I thought that it would be pretty suiting to make a video on how I take care of them. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is my cactus collection. I have quite a few as you can see. They're one of my favorite types of plants to grow just because they're so easy to take care of and they're very pretty. Let's start with watering. As most people know, cacti come from the desert, so they don't require a lot of water. I normally only water mine when I know that the soil is completely dry. And even then I'll let them go for a little while after that before watering them because I know that they're extremely drought tolerant. One sign that cacti need watered are if they have wrinkles on their leaves. If you look at my Christmas cactus right here, you'll see a spot of the plant that got a little too dry. And so it has these wrinkles on the leaves. And I have watered it, but I think I let it get a little bit too dry. Christmas cactus, as well as Thanksgiving cactus, do have some different care requirements than most other cacti. But my rule of thumb with cacti are that if I don't know whether or not they need water, to just not water. Because one of the biggest issues people tend to have with cacti is root rot, which comes from overwatering as opposed to underwatering. Cacti tend to go dormant in the winter season, so at that point, once I notice that they've stopped growing, I will cut back completely on watering and fertilizing. I haven't watered this big one right here since probably November because it hasn't been growing since then, so it doesn't need to soak up any kind of nutrients, and watering it would just raise the risk of it getting root rot. As you can see, I keep most of my cacti in terracotta pots. Sometimes I'll just leave them in their nursery pot because I find that those two types of pots do the best for airflow and letting the soil dry out pretty quickly and not staying too wet for too long because that is the quickest way to kill a cactus in my experience. Really the most important thing to consider when finding a pot for your cactus is that it has good drainage. Going along with well-draining pots, it's important to have soil that doesn't hold on to a lot of moisture for very long. You should incorporate a lot of perlite or orchid bark or sand into your soil mix for cacti because it helps them dry out a lot quicker and not hold on to too much moisture. When it comes to fertilizing cacti, I prefer to err on the side that less is more. Cacti are very susceptible to having their roots burned by being over fertilized. I prefer to use either worm castings or old coffee grounds when I fertilize because I find that it works a lot better and I don't have to be as scared of hurting my plant as I would with some type of store-bought fertilizer. Now as far as temperature goes, as I said earlier, cacti are from the desert, so they like warm, dry temperatures. Ideally, cacti would be kept in above 70 degree weather. They can do well below that, but you do not want to let your cacti be in an area that is below 50 degrees or you will start seeing some damage. As far as sunlight goes, Cacti will soak up as much sunlight as they can possibly get. Most indoor environments don't provide enough light for cacti to grow as well as they do in the desert, but you can help them out by keeping them in either a west or south facing window, and in the winter I like to even use a grow light. 
Alright guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching again and I'll see you next time.